Yeah, hi guys. Today I will show you how to use our sim scan to capture this shiny project. So we will scan twice and uh, merge the back side and the front side. So just place on this turntable. Okay. And on software side, we have the dark and shiny object options, especially for kind of material. And we click scan, capture markers first. Just click the button and it will have the light. So we use multiple angle to scan all the markers and click done. Here we will use those markers to create a background plate. And we can capture the data clearly and clean. So now I check the laser. So we see it's only the data appears. So we can slowly rotate this turntable. And also we can zoom in to check the data is complete or not. Now I finish the first project and do some data editing. Okay, clean one. So now we'll create another one and try to do the markers. Hide this plate and again. So we just flip this part. and uh, do the same operation as before. So background. And laser patch, scan. Also, we can double click the button to switch the laser to one single laser to capture inside of these parts. Okay. Then we can click down and do some data editing also. selection and now we can do the marker splice to set up the reference and the test to choose all the markers on the parts and apply so finally we'll get complete data and just click OK and hide the plate and do the wrap so we can have our match data 
We can use this data to do the 3D print inspection or the reverse engineering. So this time we will use Geomagic Design X software to show you how to do the reverse engineering. Let's go. All right, so here we're going to be taking a look at this part uh, that we have off of a ScanTech scanner. Uh, we're going to be trying to reverse engineer this part using our modeling wizards. And so we can take just quickly visually looking at this part. It's it's very obviously something that came off of a lathing machining process. It's it's very circular. Um, so we're going to be uh, leaning on the revolution wizard here. And we can actually get most, if not all, the features through this revolution wizard as they all are all around this central axis. So we're going to just run uh, quickly through the wizard first just to see how it runs and, and see what kind of results we get. I'm imagining we're going to need to do a little bit of cleanup to, to get really tight results, but let's see what we're doing right off the bat. So uh, our first step here is going to be to always, uh, we want to run a healing wizard. So anytime we're doing an automated process, we want to make sure we don't have uh, uh, small errors like small polyfaces, not such a big deal, crossing polyfaces, uh, folded polyfaces, that might cause issues further on. So just by running our uh, healing wizard, we can just set ourselves up for uh, more success further down the line. So with our healed mesh, uh, our next step in order to run the wizard is to do just a little bit of pre-processing, which is this auto-segmentation function. And what this function does is it's going to break up our mesh into areas of like curvature uh, that you'll see here on screen in a second. Here we go. And where I'm hovering my mouse, you can see this has been recognized as a cylinder. This surface is recognized as a plane. Here we have a cone. And so this kind of just pre-digests, pre-breaks up the mesh so that when the wizard looks at it, it has an easier time of, of creating the sketch entities and, and the revolution that we want. So now that we have our mesh cleaned and we have it broken up into our regions, we can actually use the revolution wizard tool. And so I'm just going to select the entirety of the mesh, feed that to the tool, and see what kind of results we get. So what this did is it created a, uh, using this area of the mesh, it created a central axis off of that axis, it created a plane with a sketch. And if I hide my mesh here, it might be a little bit easier to see. And so you can see the profile that it pulled as well as the sketch that it fit to it. And we can see right here, I mean, this is not a, a great result fitting there. Uh, and, and if I scroll further down, I'm sure we're gonna see similar story in, in other areas as well. And, and like I said before, that doesn't surprise me. Um, this is very similar to the auto uh, surface function, if you're familiar with that, where we're, we're shrink wrapping the, the mesh with NURBS. And you have to do a little bit of cleanup work on the front end there as well to get better results. So it is an automated process, but we wanna set ourselves up for success, like I said before, right? So if we check our deviation analysis, as I suspected, I mean, we could just see visually there that we've got a few areas of, of some pretty not great compliance to the accuracy goal. So we definitely want to uh, take a step back and make sure that we're doing this uh, with best practices, right? So here's our mesh, we can go backwards and I'm gonna remove that region grouping because we're gonna do a little bit of mesh editing first. So the first area I was seeing uh, issues with is these big obvious areas where the mesh quality itself is, is just not that great. So this was done with a line of sight scanner. And of course, with line of sight scanners, we're not gonna get down into to holes and nooks and crannies so good. So I'm going to remove that area of the mesh because this is really not anything we wanna be modeling off of anyway. Um, if this was something we wanted to preserve, we could pretty easily do it just copying the mesh and creating a new one so that our edits here aren't gonna affect anything going forward. So uh, just with my paintbrush tool, I'm gonna quickly come in here and remove, basically cut this off. And then we should be removing that data that's uh, not the best of quality due to that line of sight issue I was talking about, and we should get better results on our wizard. All right, now we're gonna grab everything, flip our selection to get rid of all that floating data, and there we go. And so now we have uh, removed all of those big obvious, uh, call them like macro errors. And then the other thing we can do is to, um, while we saw in the beginning, um, 
or, or if we haven't looked at this yet, we can see the edges where the triangles are larger in flatter areas and tighter in curved areas. And while this is great for some functions, for the um, auto sketching function, this can sometimes cause issues. So the auto sketching will like meshes that are more um, evenly triangulated and more density can help there as well. So that's an easy fix. What we can do is jump over to our polygons tab and run this function called the global remesh function. And what this is going to do, is it's going to retriangulate this surface and basically take away all this optimization and replace it with a bunch of uniform triangles. That's gonna be easier for our process here. So while this form with minimized triangles is efficient for a lot of things, right? file size and, and other functions to run quickly. Here, we're actually going in the opposite direction for the tool that we're looking for. And what we can do as well during this global remesh is that we can actually change this, the, the edge length multiplier. And what this is going to do is it's our, our average edge, edge length is about 0.8 millimeters right now with some big ones and some small ones, right? So we're saying chop that in half. So we want about, it's gonna be roughly twice the amount of triangles. It's gonna be um, higher resolution, like we said, uh, while making the triangles a little bit more even. So let's see what that looks like. Keep your eyes on the mesh while this is running and you'll see it pop in as soon as it's good. And we're gonna see much more consistent small triangles there. So there we go. We can see all of our triangulation is a lot more consistent and that should give us a good, uh, a much better result with our wizard. So now we're starting from uh, the region grouping step that we did before. So we just need to run this auto segmentation again. We should get basically the exact same result as before. We haven't really changed too much. And there we go. And then we can run our revolution wizard. Grab all of our regions, jump over here. We can also do some setting tweaks here to improve some things. And now, if we're looking at that cross section again, we can see, well, we were on the other side before for comparison's sake. We can see that instead of one big circle there, it's a little bit tighter fitting. And, and as an automated process, it's never gonna be perfect. But as we can see here, we're getting a lot closer results to, to what we're looking for by increasing that density of, of the triangles. And we're getting all the radii in there that we were missing before. So this is looking like a much better result. Let's just check it a little bit more objectively with the accuracy analyzer. And that's looking pretty good, I would say. And I always like to, uh, especially if I'm uh, honing in on something and, and really wanna make sure that the uh, result is what I want, I'll jump in here to the sketch and just check out what's exactly going on here and what that fitting is like. And like I said, there's gonna be a few areas that we need to touch up, um, but it's looking like we're getting a much better result, of course. This is a much improved, we're, uh, there are a bunch of uh, arcs that we're, we're going around there. And it, it really comes down to that resolution of the underlying, if you can see it right here, magenta polyline in the background. So if this doesn't have great resolution due to the data, this, can, this curve can, can easily be lost, right? Whereas like maybe, I think it was just the one area up here I saw that maybe wasn't the greatest fit it was right here. And this all depends on your designer intuition, right? So this to me looks like a flat with a flat and an extra edge there. So if we went a little bit higher resolution, that'd probably be caught, or we can just come in here and, and manually touch this one area up because it'll be faster than fooling around with the uh, settings to get uh, our, our automated results to behave how they, they we want them to. So we can pull that up there. That looks pretty good. We'll say here. And that should be good. We'll corner trim together. And then just throw some fillets on there to make sure that we're getting all the features that we need. If you notice, this process is pretty easy given that we can actually interact natively with that polyline underneath and, and snap to it. And now I have what, what I would say is a much more uh, true to form representation there as opposed to a single arc. I have two arcs and a line and, and that's gonna fit that profile a lot better. But of course, at the end of the day, it, it depends on what this is used for. And if, if this is maybe part wear or something like that, we, we might want something different. But if we're just strictly going for adherence to the mesh, this is the way to go. And of course, as we exit out, that, that parametrically gets updated.
So really just that minor area there, and, and we have really nice results from our modeling wizard. So lesson of the day is that um, even though these functions are automated and they can really help, it doesn't mean we can just throw any garbage at them. We do want to make sure that we're, we're following best practices and, and feeding in uh, good inputs into the automated machine to get good outputs.